Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 20 of my 3D printed scrap metal inspired Geiger Alien Xenomal suit. Last time I put some minor details on, mainly the big licky tongue piece at the back and a couple of extra bits around the ribs. And we also looked at some electronics for lighting the suit. Now what I really wanted was the look of sort of green liquid like Alien's blood flowing through its veins. I'm gonna do that with LED lighting and some 3D printed parts in Tormann tea glass. So this time we're gonna have a look at lighting the head and I'm hoping to get some sort of biomechanically inspired, scrap metal inspired kind of lighting in there. And then we'll eventually move on to the body. And what I'd like to do with the left arm, which I haven't printed, is make it kind of look like it's severed so that we can have the bicep and the shoulder bell there as we've got with the right arm here, but then have the lower arm, just lots of green glowing sections. And that also gives me the option to put in a hand controller so I can operate animatronics and other things. So let's have a look at some CAD. It looks fairly uninteresting, but this is the object that I'm going to print. It's a kind of little pot thing. Um, and this is going to be printed hollow, so I'm going to print this with no infill and um, no top surface. So essentially we get something that's shelled out and it's hollow so we can put a light inside. I mean, in fact, what's going to happen is these things are going to be on their side, um, all lined up. So they look a bit like the hoses on Alien but they're going to run internally within the head lengthways, so I need quite a few of these. Now we're gonna print these in tea glass, and there's a few things about tea glass we need to print quite slow, exactly at the right temperature, and so on. So um, it's gonna take a bit of doing to get the settings right, and I've never used tea glass before, and these are going to be printed in green, so they're nice and alien blood looking. So I'm busy printing that out. A couple of the things I've found are that you need to go quite slow, about this slow, to get um, nice optical clarity. So if we just shine something in there, you can see that's nice, nice and shiny. Um, if we print too quick, as well as too cold, we get something rather more cloudy and less shiny. So you can see the bottom half there is rather more opaque. The top part I slowed the printer right down so it's become nice and shiny again. It still diffuses light okay, uh, but it's not quite as nice as the other one in terms of it being transparent, basically. Um, for this, I'm not too worried, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one anyway, but the rest I'm printing quite slowly, and these are taking about three hours each to produce at this speed. printed eight of those so in total we're 24 hours into the printing at three hours each and I need to do at least 10 for each side of the head I think so the plan is that we're going to align them like this inside all the way along and then we'll have those light lights in last time which fade on and off that I showed you last time so that we get a kind of action of lights traveling back or bubbles traveling back through this giant green hose and I need to make some mountings for these as well so uh, while the rest of these are printing, I can make some little brackets to attach them to and to hold the LEDs and the wiring. Getting there, still got a quite a lot of those green things to print, and I started to print some mounts and diffusers, so let's have a look at those. So I printed these white things, which are cones that go in the top and bottom, so I've got one with a hole, and one that goes in the bottom, and those are very slightly cone-shaped to uh, diffuse the light outwards, so I've got two here. I've also tried painting some of those with um, some silver paint to see if that makes the reflections any better. But actually I think the white ones work slightly better if I just turn those on. Let's just kill that light. I'm pretty sure this one is better than this one and this is the one with just white in it. And this is the one with silver in it which um, almost doesn't work at all in fact. So I think we'll stick with the white diffusers in all of those. So while the rest of those green things are printing, I've installed all of the bases in the head there with their white reflectors all the way down. There's 10 on each side and the rear one is facing backwards. So I'm ready to wire my LEDs to them and I've built a little circuit. So last time I showed you the Arduino Uno, which I did the test with, I've actually built a circuit here using the Arduino Nano. 
And it's also got that um, ULN 2803 Darlington driver chip to source the current for all the LEDs installed. And obviously lots of pins for the LEDs and this is just soldered on a bit of strip board. Um, which is pretty much as high density as I can go to make all those connections. So this whole thing is going to be powered from a 12 volt LiPo. The um, power is going to the Arduino on the V-in pin and it's got its own onboard 5 volt regulator so the LEDs won't be driven from that 5 volt output, they'll be driven straight off the battery with appropriate LEDs with the current being switched by the Arduino and passing through the ULN 2803. Right, I've got four pairs of LEDs up and running so they all blink down in turn and the plan is to cascade that pattern all the way down the head to populate all ten. So all my modules there for lighting are wired in, so all ten of them. And my board is now here with a whole lot of wires attached um, and eventually that is going to sit right in the back of the head so it's going to be part of the fun with all these wires hooked up in here somewhere. Um, so all the wires look like they're part of it. I've also used up the spare channels to wire in some other random LEDs at the bottom. So if we uh, give that some power Turn off these lights. Should be able to see various lights flashing and you'll notice the green LEDs down on the bench there take up two of the channels so they're mostly on apart from when those two channels come round and then they dim down. So if you're lucky you should be able to see sections of lights going off chasing backwards. It's a bit hard to see at the moment because the um, lights light up a bit of the one in front. All of my green pots are finished. It took about 60 hours to print all 20 of them at 3 hours each. But there they are. And I did them all on one printer so it took almost the whole week, mainly because I only had one roll of tea glass. What I should have done of course is cut it in half and um, put some onto an empty spool. But all of those are ready to be fitted onto those bases that I've put into the head with the lights on. So all my lights are fitted and you should be able to see various sections turning off there going backwards. I've messed around with the speed a little bit. It seems to work quite well and I think it gives the sort of glowing effect I want where it's not flashing like a disco or a Christmas tree but sort of subtly turning sections of its brain on and off. So I'm pretty happy with that, even uh, without the lights on in daylight the tea glass really catches the light. Um, it's quite good optical stuff so it's going to look pretty good and obviously Aliens um, blood was glow in the dark in the movie so I only really need the lighting effect to work in low light. So i um, pretty happy with that, there's going to be a lot more tea glass in the rest of the suit. Next time I'm going to work on the left arm which as I mentioned is going to look like it's severed so I can have a hand controller. That's going to be a combination of tea glass and black ABS parts. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and other projects. And also check out the links in the description to this video for my social media pages where you can look at sneak peeks and updates.